third thing we need to understand. We need to understand the value of free will. Free will is the ability to do other than you do. It's the ability to make significant moral choices. Life's primary lesson, by the way, is that we're learning the knowledge of good and evil. I submit to you, I'll say that again, life's primary me- me- lesson is that you and I on this earth are learning the knowledge of good and evil. And natural laws, understand something now, this is something we could spend quite a bit of time on, but natural laws must work in regular ways if our actions are going to mean anything at all. Otherwise, you have Billy and Bobby sitting at the dinner table, and Bobby's cutting his steak with a steak knife, and all of a sudden he jabs it into Billy's side, and it turns to rubber, and the whole family laughs. You know, we could come in, you know, Bobby could, you know, I mean, you know, basically we could tell the kids, hey, why don't you go outside in the pool and see who could hold the other down the longest? You know, I mean, uh, because... God God would always fix it, but that's not a real world. That's a cartoon world. That's not a real world. People ask me about Hurricane Katrina. They go, wow, why would God let that happen? Why would God let this hurricane wipe out, basically wipe out New Orleans? I said, well, let's think about it for a minute. We built a city below sea level, (laughs) and we built it with walls. This is all true. We built it with walls that we knew, not weren't sure of, but we knew could not withstand a hurricane beyond category three. And we already knew that category four and five bigger hurricanes existed naturally in our experience. So we built a city below sea level with protections that we knew were inadequate to handle a threat that we already knew existed. Solomon said in Proverbs 19, 3, When a man's folly brings his way to ruin, his heart rages against the Lord. Now, people say, well, why doesn't God make his power more sensibly present? Why doesn't he, you know, he could. Well, he could. He could have made the world such that when we looked up through the ceiling, we saw a giant flaming sword. And we went, whoa, there's a giant flaming sword. He could have made, he could make the world like that. He could have. And if that, and if you ever rebelled against him, He just cut you in half immediately and you were gone. How many people would be Christians in that world? All of them. How many would be worshipers? I wonder if there'd be anyone worshiping in that kind of a world. What if every time you prayed, you were healed? I mean, you were just, well, I ask this in Jesus' name. Whoa, I'm (laughs) doing good. How many people would be Christians? I mean, you'd be a fool not to be, right? I'm, wow, woo. What if Christianity was like a drug? It's like, whoa. I broke my foot, by the way, about eight months ago, and they gave me Percocet. And I remember, I was lying there in bed, and my foot still broke. You know, I had to have screws in my foot. My foot still broke, and I, I'd never used that before. And I went, I can see why people steal this. <laughs> 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 like oxycodone, I get it. But anyway... He could have made Christianity like a drug. He could have. He could have made it where you were just like, oh, man, I came to Jesus. It's good. No. Dude, no, it's good. I mean, how many people wouldn't want to just go, I'm happy. It's good. But he wants real people. And here we are. Understand something. Feigned loyalty is no more than rebellion waiting for an opportunity. He could force you. He could make it where you go, giant flaming sword. Oh, yeah, you and me, God, we're like this. But that's not real worship. That's not real love. There's no real relationship there. 